And welcome back to our Celebrate Cities coverage. This half hour, Rob is talking to the owners of the Blueberry Manor. Hey Rob, how is it going over there in the city of Poplarville? Hey, good morning, Anzi. It's going exceptionally well, my friend. Love being out in the local area. We're in Poplarville. The sun is shining. It's springtime, and we are at the blueberry capital of the world. Not just Mississippi. Of we're, the world. That's, yeah, <laughs> look, that's what we're telling people today. You can tell me otherwise tomorrow, but those are fighting words today. This is the blueberry capital of the world today, technically Mississippi. And you folks know the blueberry jubilee coming up in just an not this weekend. But the next. Next weekend. Okay. So right now we've got Brandy and Tony Perville. No, I didn't say that right. Purvail. Purvail. I'm sorry <laughs> about that. Uh, guys, thank you for joining me. Uh, I see you've got your blue on, man. Is that representing the Blueberry Festival? That's my local pawn shop. Oh, okay. Great. Uh, so you are, both of you are local business owners in the area. Um, when we heard about Blueberry Manor, correct? Yes. Tell us about what started this? First of all, are y'all from the local area? We are from Pearl River County. He okay. is from the Picayune area and owned a construction business there for 26 years. Um, I'm from Poplarville, graduated high school here in 2001. We love our community. We really embrace the phrase, love where you live. Mm -hmm. And so we've tried to meet the needs of our community to see exactly you know, what it is that we can do to contribute to the success of Poplarville. And we determined that there was a need for some short-term lodging. Mm -hmm. So folks who were traveling in for different things like the Jubilee, uh, they needed somewhere to stay. And we had the opportunity to buy this house here in town. And it was actually set up kind of like a duplex. Mm -hmm. um, the families that had lived there previously had shared environments there. And so we purchased it, did some renovations. Uh, we've been told it's the oldest house in Poplarville. We were just discussing that back there, trying to determine if it really was. Mm -hmm. It was started in 1884 and finished in 1887, so it's pretty old. Um, but we did renovations and turned it into just some short-term lodging. So kind of like Airbnb, but in Poplarville, it's a bed and breakfast. It's got a unique twist. It's completely uh, contactless. So it's door codes to get in. Okay. Nobody lives on site, but we leave breakfast items there, orange juice, coffee, water. Um, everything's there for folks to just go punch in that door code and spend the oh. night. So, so it's like magical little fairies coming throughout the night and just okay. getting everything set up. Get it all ready for you. Yeah, and look. Yeah, I understand a bed and breakfast, but my goodness, with such a historic building, I imagine hoops, quite a few hoops you had to jump through, um, or was it just like going in and renovating someplace? No, it wasn't just going in and renovating. It was a lot of hard work. What I, what I mean by that, with, with it being a historic building, did you have to follow guidelines to keep it somewhat historic as well, or were you able to just come in and strip it down to bare bones and redo it how you wanted to? Oh no, we saved and preserved as much of the historic home as we could. Mm -hmm. So we used like beams from the porch where we had to redo the porch. We used that as our floating shelves in the kitchen. We built shelving in um, like kind of our little area to put our sign in books, all of our shelves in the hallways. We used all of that reclaimed wood that we were able to save. We restored the floors in six of the rooms. We only had to put down flooring, I think in two or three rooms. Two two rooms. Um, so we were able to preserve a lot of the home and the city was great working with us. They saw the need for this as well and so they really helped us with what we needed to make it happen. You know, I, I love that collaboration. I love the fact that y'all are from the local area. You saw a need and decided to go ahead and fill that need and the city working with y'all, working in conjunction with the city instead of getting a lot of pushback. Uh, yeah, we don't want to do that. I, I like that. I like that as far as growth and development goes. Now, the Blueberry Inn, that's not the only thing y'all have going on, right? You guys have a couple of other constructions in the works right now? Yeah. We do. Yes, yeah, some older homes we have purchased to turn around, flip, so keeping some as rentals. Okay. Um, we're really investing in the community. We want you know folks to have places to stay. So rentals in town, we're working on a building right now that has five apartments in it. Yeah. And so that'll be like a month-to-month, -month long-term lodging option there. We have another house that has three apartments in it, but that'll also be an option for longer lodging. Was the Blueberry Inn the start of all of this? Now, Tony, you said you have a, a pawn business as well. Which came first all together? We started the pawn shop business first, okay. and then we purchased this home. We started the manor second. 
Okay, so the manor came second, and now it continues along the residential lines, I guess. Yes, absolutely. Any way that we can meet the needs of the community. So there used to be a pawn shop in Poplarville about 20 years ago, and it burned down. And so we recognized that that was an opportunity here in town that could help serve our community. So we opened that three years ago in August. Um, and it's been a really great success. And then we started the manor um, and then just realized that there was a need for some different lodging options. And so working on those rentals. And then there is another home here um, that's kind of a favorite of the town that through just unfortunate circumstances had been allowed to go into disrepair. And we just purchased it. Um, it didn't have a roof on it for like 20 years. And we just got the roof finished two weeks ago. Um, so everybody follows our progress on Facebook on that house because like I said, it's kind of the favorite of the town. It's downtown, everybody loves it. It needs a little bit of work, but it's really going to be our showpiece when we're finished. I imagine that's got to have huge satisfaction to it, uh, not only developing a business, but the fact that you took something that was over 100 years old and you brought it back to life, and it's going to sustain for X amount of you know decades or however long to come. Absolutely. We already have bookings at the manor through April of next year. That is wonderful. I guess my, my earpiece is not working. My guy back there is telling me to wrap. Guys, I want to thank you all so much. We did have some photos of the Blueberry Manor that we were shown. We went to your Facebook page and we pulled it off there as well, or the website. My producer did that. Uh, so we showcased that a little bit. But again, you know, it's really nice to meet people that, that grew up in an area that are locals. And instead of moving and taking their talent someplace else, they develop what they know and continue to grow that as well. That's, that's tremendous. Absolutely. You have to love where you live. Yeah. Thank you both for joining us this Thank morning. You. I really appreciate it. Uh, folks, Tony and um, Brandy. Brandy, I'm sorry. I met a lot of people this morning. I Please understand. forgive me. Uh, we're reporting live from Poplarville from the Main Street Coffee Company. We're going to have much more coming up in just a bit. Stick around. Uh, but right now, reporting live from Poplarville for WXAV News 25, I'm Rob Knight.